The latest entry in the Code Geass franchise, Rosé of the Recapture, has now begun streaming on Disney+, Plus, and leading up to its release, I've been watching through the original Code Geass Lelouch of the Rebellion series. But did it live up to the insane level of praise that it gets within 2024? Let's talk about it. But before I dive into my thoughts, I want to hear from you guys, so head on down to the comment section below and let me know your thoughts on the original Code Geass Lelouch of the Rebellion series. And while you're there, please do leave a like on this video and subscribe. If you are a fan of mecha anime content, I want to see plenty more videos like this in the future. I'll have a review coming for Lelouch of the Resurrection, that is the sequel film, along with the spin-off OVA thing, Akito the Exiled, and of course, I will be talking about Rosé of the Recapture as well. So to give you guys a little bit of brief history on my time, I guess, with the Code Geass franchise, I actually started watching this series like quite a few years ago when I first like started to get into anime I think it was kind of after I'd watched Evangelion I wanted like another mecha series Code Geass I'd heard things about I heard it was you know very popular and very good so I gave it a watch I started watching like the first four episodes or something and it's not that I disliked it by any means but I just kind of fell off it and I just didn't continue watching it for whatever reason I knew that Rosé the Recapture was coming to Disney Plus in late June so I thought now was the right time to start with this franchise of course beginning with Lelouch of the Rebellion and I can very confidently and thankfully say that it lived up to the hype and probably more so. Now first off let me just say how good this show holds up visually. There's really fantastic moments of animation in here across the board. Animation looks great. Design work of course is fantastic. Character design from Clamp. This is one of those series where the design team were just kind of firing on all cylinders, whether that's the character designs for the humans, but of course the character designs, or should I say the design work for the mecha as well is incredible. The nightmares in this series look so good. The Lancelot is probably my personal favourite. I do love a good white and gold colour scheme, which we don't get a whole lot of with mecha, but when we do, they always look like really damn good. Recent example being the Cal Ray from Gundam Sea Freedom, which is one of my favorite suits within the Gundam Sea franchise. They put those mech designs to good use as well though, because we have some fantastic action sequences, big epic battles, ships going up against each other, mechs going up against each other. It's got everything that you want from a pretty large scale series like this, where you have, you know, almost like nations clashing. You have people fighting for certain territories. It is a very big story, but it's also extremely personal. It's a very hyper-focused story, ultimately, when you look at what the main character goal is. There's fantastic world building in this series that very much leaves itself open to do spin-off stuff. Of course, we do have Akito the Exiled, which is essentially a spin-off. So within that, of course, like there's your potential, your potential is being utilized there. Rose of the Recapture is also like a sequel, but also like separate characters, separate kind of story. So again, you could class that as something of a spin-off. Moving back to those personal stakes though, this entire series would not work without our lead character, Lelouch Lamprouge, or Lelouch v Britannia, however you want to title him. He is one of the best in anime. I would comfortably put him in my top 10 main characters anime of all time, maybe even top five. And I don't think that's an unpopular opinion either. Most people do share that same sentiment that Lelouch is like a top tier anime main character. There's a goal that he has in mind from the start of the series right through to the end. That goal stays pretty much the same, even though morals behind it may be changed. Maybe he goes through a bit of a darker path in some places. Ultimately, there is still an end goal that he is seeking out and that's what he wants to achieve, and that really never changes. But it's just the way in which he approaches that that maybe does like sometimes alter. He sits in that category of being like the villainous protagonist where you're very much following his story and the ultimate goal is maybe good but some of his methods are often like morally grey, maybe not even morally grey sometimes like straight up kind of evil in some ways where he's willing to sacrifice anything in his path in order to get to this goal. I think he does very much sit in the category of like a light from Death Note or Ayana Koji from Classroom of the Elite or an Eren Jaeger from Attack on Titan and from what I've seen from like those characters I think they probably did Lelouch the best because even though he does go down these really dark paths and betrays people and uses people as pawns and such he never really like completely loses humanity they could have definitely gone down the direction of him essentially becoming just a complete monster by the end of the series without the slightest shred of humanity and even though he loses so much throughout the series he never loses it completely there's always this human element a, a relatability to him that you can really feel and you understand 
why he's doing what he's doing, even if you don't agree with the methods. And I gotta be honest, getting to the last five episodes or so of the series, I was a little bit worried because they kind of take this direction with Lelouch where he essentially does go down this full-on tyrant, dictator, evil persona, but the way that they kind of bring it back at the end and showcase why he went down this path in those last few episodes, it all comes together and makes sense. And I was very much sitting on the fence whether they would manage to stick the landing with the series because I wasn't really feeling it in those last few episodes until essentially the finale and kind of the final moments of it. It's so damn compelling, it's also incredibly emotional, and it's got to be one of the best anime endings I have ever seen. And you know what they say about stories, they're only ever as good as their ending. And if we're going to judge Code Geass as a series purely on its ending, then it is a top tier anime series. And even though Lelouch is such an incredible protagonist, you also have a great supporting cast surrounding him. Characters like Suzuku, for example, who I think is really, really well fleshed out and kind of serves as the opposite end to Lelouch, but also they're very much similar characters in a way, almost two sides of the same coin. But then you've got more supporting characters like Callan and Shirley, they're just all really damn well done. There's a lot of characters in this series and of course not every single one of them gets the heights of spotlight that maybe Lelouch or Suzuku get. You can't expect that from a series, you can't expect every single character to get the most lengthy character arc, but even some of the more minor characters they give them good stuff to do and they give them like actual good characterization. Now I'm not saying in a year from now I'm going to remember like this entire supporting cast extremely fondly and look back on them and remember every single name of every single character that appears in this series but in the moment looking at it I think you know what yeah like everyone gets the moments to shine everyone gets solid characterization even some get like kind of mini character acts that all come a little bit full circle in the end it just does everything right. So overall, watching Code Geass Lelouch of the Rebellion in 2024 was certainly an experience that I will very much cherish. I think this is such a well-told story that from beginning to end, you feel like there is a vision. You have one of the best main characters in anime history that goes through an incredible arc. He's got a fantastic ending, which getting that ending right is always so difficult with this series but for some reason they nailed it here you've got massive scale battles incredible mecha action political intrigue but of course ultimately it is a very personal story as well this is one of those series that just hits every single beat correctly in my opinion and i would comfortably put it in one of the greatest anime series of all time so with all that in mind i'm going to give code geass lucia the rebellion an s before I get out of here though, please do leave a like on this video, also subscribe if you are a fan of mecha anime content, I want to see plenty more videos like this in the future. Like I did say earlier, I will have a review of Lelouch of the Resurrection, that is the sequel film, along with a review of Akito the Exiled, which is the spin-off, and then the most recent series, Rose of the Recapture. I don't know whether I'm going to do weekly reviews of it, but I'm definitely going to review the first episode and then the series as a whole. Thank you once again for tuning into Mecha Chat today, and I'll see you guys next time.